안녕하십니까 연세타워 치과 손선범 원장입니다. Hello, my name is Son s o n b o m from Yonsei Tower Dental Clinic. Today, I'm going to talk about keratinized gingiva contents, importance and controversy over keratinized gingiva, whether it is necessary. Keratinized gingiva whitening techniques. The soft tissue around natural teeth and implants can be divided into keratinized gingiva and mucosa. Clinical significance of keratinized gingiva. It keeps the depth of vestibule, controls plaque around the gingiva margin, prevents excessive movement of the gingiva margin, and prevents recession of gingiva margin. When it comes to the health of soft tissue around implants, the issue has been whether the keratinized tissue is important. According to Dr. Lin, systematic review in 2013, from the natural teeth perspective, if oral hygiene is good, even without oral vestibule, extraction is not really made. It was found in such cases or a vestibule was not shallow. What it implicates is that when it comes to the health of soft tissue, the existence of keratinized gingiva, not the existence itself, but, but the depth of vestibule is more important. So the objective of a treatment is not to create keratinized gingiva, but to make a deep vestibule. If that is the case, when we secure vascular depth, what are the advantages? It reduces a trauma to the cervical area of gingiva due to food. It is easy to do tooth brushing. It reduces plaque accumulation around the cervical area due to self-cleaning mechanism. When you expect the difficulty of tooth brushing or discomfort during chewing, after treatment, you need to devise something to make the vestibule deep. This video shows a patient who was treated in another dental clinic. The patient complained discomfort around implants. I observed it closely. When buccal side is moving, the movable gingiva mucosa around implants is breaking the cervical ceiling of implants, which is making the oral hygiene more difficult. Lack of keratinized gingiva, is it related to soft tissue inflammation? Not really. Even though keratinized gingiva is insufficient in good oral hygiene, the inflammation doesn't occur that much, but when oral hygiene is not very good, insufficient keratinized gingiva would bring about more serious tissue damage. This is something that we need to consider around the implants after treatment after time passes the height of soft tissue would not be maintained so the probability of soft tissue recession would go up this would affect aesthetics in the anterior region lack of keratinized gingiva doesn't mean it is totally free from soft tissue inflammation. It, depending on soft tissue biotype, crystal bone level, depth of implant platform, and buccal position of implant would affect the height of soft tissue. Therefore, we need to position implants properly to avoid it. When implants are placed properly, soft tissue recession may occur less later. Indications for keratinized gingiva whitening techniques. When the width of buccal keratinized gingiva is less than 2 mm, if a lot of plaque is expected due to shallow vestibule, if frenulum or muscle attachment is extended high, 
types of the technique epically positioned flap, free gingiva graft, connective tissue graft. If the width of characterized gingiva is more than 2 mm, widening techniques can be used. APF is the choice. If the width is less than 2 mm, FGG or CTG can be selected. APF technique, split thickness flap is created and it is fixed at the bottom. Here, keratinized gingiva would be extended through the secondary healing. Here is a tip when a split thickness flap is created at this end, if 0.5 to 1 millimeter keratinized gingiva can be secured, the technique can go really smoothly because at the bottom, we need to fix it if there is keratinized gingiva, suturing can be done more easily. The suturing here, it should be fixed strongly on the periosteum. Half-buried horizontal matrix suture should be used for the suturing. APF, if you properly perform APF, we can expect increase of keratinized gingiva. Mucogingiva junction and muscular insertion can be improved. The technique can be performed during the second implant surgery simultaneously, so there is a less burden for additional surgery. The disadvantage is that if a patient has thin biotype, creating split thickness of flap is difficult, so that is the limitation. Let's look at an actual case. After the secondary surgery, this is the situation. GBR with a lot of volume was done, so the mucogingiva junction is raised upward. If prostheses are to be fabricated in this situation, a lot of plaque will be accumulated around the cervical area. Oral hygiene of a patient would be challenging, so this needs to be improved. Epically positioned flap was planned for that. Epically positioned flap is created. The vestibule should be made deep as much as possible by creating a deep split thickness flap. That is very important. And it is also important to, to use half buried horizontal matrix suture at the bottom to achieve very strong suturing. If that is performed when prosthesis is connected later, food would be going out from the bottom self-cleaning and toothbrushing here would be facilitated. The secondary healing is being done compared to before surgery. The vestibule has become deep. Through the secondary healing, keratinized gingiva is created compared to before surgery. It is deep here. Keratinized gingiva has increased as well. However, at the time of prosthesis mounting, a little bit of relapse occurred. The apically positioned flap has the tendency of relapse over time. This will go up a little bit. You need to remember that. Next, free gingiva graft. Free gingiva graft is um, performing epically positioned flap in a standard way. And here, this is the graft obtained from the palate, and it is fixed, made immovable. This is a definite way of acquiring the attached gingiva. The objective of free gingiva graft is 
When keratinized tissue is lacking or very little, this is the most effective way to get the keratinized gingiva. It has high predictability and it can be performed at any stage of implant surgery. However, it requires a donor site, so uncomfortable area would be increased and there is discomfort after the surgery, so that it is compared to APF. And patch-like discoloring can occur, so this should be avoided in the static region. Let's have a look at actual case. The mucogingiva junction is placed upward. A split thickness flap is made, and fixation was achieved using half-buried horizontal matrix suture. After that, a template is used. The amount that we desire is obtained from the pallet donor site. A graft is obtained like this, and the fat tissue inside is removed. After that, to make it immobile, left, right, up and down, strong suture should be made so that the graft is not moving. That is the key to this technique. One week after the operation, it is healed very well. At week two, the engraftment is almost complete. If you come to an offline master courses, various hands-on will be provided so that we can make you to be strong at clinical situations. You will appreciate the course if you want to upgrade your implant placement skill. Thank you.